I know, I know, you've been asking for it for a long time. Where is a new Beverly Hills Cop movie? The last one we had was in the mid-90s. I sure hope Eddie Murphy and company can step up to the plate and bring a new film in the franchise that's been dormant for like 30 years. I'm really champing at the bit for another Beverly Hills Cop movie. Well, don't worry. Netflix has heard your pleas and they present Beverly Hills Cop. Axel F. Why isn't it called Beverly Hills Cop 4? I don't Axel f -y know, but let's talk about this movie. <sighs> we just can't let anything die, can we? We just can't let anyone retire. At 63 years young, Eddie Murphy is back as Axel Foley, ready to take on a new set of criminals, and this time, gets to team up with his daughter. How refreshing! A movie franchise where the old hero comes back for one last ride, and now he's saddled with an adult kid. I think I... yeah. Yeah, I hate what Netflix has done to movies, to cinema, as it were. All of these movies look like digital shit. There is no cinematic quality to any of them. As I watched Axel F, I just kept thinking, man, I remember when movies used to have some sort of feel to them and they didn't just look like stock crap put up on TV, on streaming services. I used to get like some emotion out of scenes. They felt real in a sense. Nothing in this movie feels real, even though there's practical effects aplenty. There's, it's just because the cameras that they use, these Ultra HD cameras that are required, basically, they're mandatory for Netflix movies, lose any sort of depth of field, any sort of film grain, and we're left with this highly polished production that loses any of the raw integrity the Beverly Hills movies had before. As I watched this movie, I thought, you know, it's okay. It's okay. The whole way through, I thought, it's okay. But then I went back and watched a couple clips from the old movie just to see like where it stacks up. I didn't even need to watch the whole films. Just a couple clips were enough to remind me of what movies used to be. We see a young Eddie Murphy go up to the concierge at the hotel, ask for a room. There is ambience in the background. There's people moving around. There is this back and forth banter and there's just time for the scene to breathe and for Eddie to showcase his amazing talent, his amazing acting chops as a comedian. Oh, that'll be $235 a night, sir. This one scene in the first movie trounces anything the new film has to offer. I then went back and watched a clip from Beverly Hills Cop 3, notoriously the worst of the bunch. I don't mind it. It's the scene where he's chasing after a bad guy and his car is falling to pieces <laughs> and it's hilarious. But there's also a sense of speed to it. There's a sense of motion to it. And I am doing this preamble because I'm gonna get to talk about Beverly Hills 4, I promise, right now. But if you could first subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. I put movie content out every week. Would love to have you stick around. All right, keep what I said in the back of your pocket because it's gonna be relevant right now. Beverly Hills Cop Axel F is incredibly mediocre and that's the best thing I can say about it. Eddie Murphy has still got it, I guess, but this is a young man's game. It's like Harrison Ford dusting off that goddamn hat for one last ride again with Indiana Jones 5. These properties are not meant for dudes in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And even though Beverly Hills Cop 4 tries to make it the same thing as it was, it's not. All of his partners look old as shit. They're back, still doing their jobs, out of retirement. They use like a couple throwaway lines to get it there. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because there's no stakes to any of this. It's supposed to be a fun, light comedy with some good action. There is some decent comedy here and there. I found myself chuckling a few times. The action doesn't work at all. There's no sense of urgency. There's no sense of speed. There are several chase scenes in this film. They all feel like they're going in slow motion. It doesn't help that every time there's a chase scene, he's in a very slow moving vehicle, but still, going back to even the third Beverly Hills Cop, during that chase scene in the back alleyway, things are moving fast. There is a sense of danger, there is a rawness to it that's just missing now. So what do we have this time? Well, Axel Foley's still up to his old tricks, gets a call from his buddy that is estranged daughter, 
Yeah, we haven't we haven't had this trope before. The old hero who has an estranged kid. He has to go back to California to go help her out because she's representing a client who's been framed for the murder of a cop and she believes he's innocent. We know he's innocent right away because Kevin Bacon looks like the most stereotypical villain you've ever seen. <laughs> He's also working for the precinct, and it's just clear he's the bad guy right away. And they, to be fair, they don't really try to make it a mystery. It's pretty early on when you find out that he is the villain, which is kind of funny because he's just kind of openly in broad daylight going around doing bad guy things, and no one is any the wiser. So the majority of this movie is going to be Axel and his daughter Jane teaming up together, you know, going on missions. They're going to have their little rapport about how... He wasn't there for her, yada, yada, yada. We also have Detective Bobby, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's, he's fine. I, I like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He always puts in a good performance. He and Axel work much better together, but unfortunately that stuff doesn't really play out until the final act of the film. All the old dogs are back as well. We have Taggart, we have Rosewood. We even have Serge back. And he's, he's always great. I love this character. He's fun as hell. But nostalgia is a hell of a drug and it's one that wore off on me long, long ago. I don't think anybody needs to watch this film. I think if you're really a big fan of the franchise, sure, you're gonna you're gonna be giddy, I guess, seeing these guys back again, playing off each other once in a while. But there's just nothing exciting for me in this movie. I like the original Beverly Hills Cop trilogy, all three of them, as a matter of fact. I did not need another one, and I don't think it works having Eddie Murphy so much older. There's just a youthful nature to this franchise that's missing when you bring these guys back again for one last ride. The music, of course, is fire. We have the iconic theme song mixed in here and there. There's actually a lot of songs from the original movies that come back again. Neutron Dance is in the mix, which is a phenomenal song. And the scenes do not feel like they were crafted around the music but it's vice versa. These songs are just kind of like thrown in to tip the hat to the originals. In fact, it does the thing that I hate in movies where they'll cut the music randomly during the middle of a refrain or during the middle of a verse to make it line up better with what's going on in the flick. Hate that crap. The nicest thing I can say about this film is it has one of the most random, awesome cameos ever. I'm not gonna spoil it. But when it happened, I just thought, wait, why, why is this person in the film? I, I appreciated it. I didn't really understand why, but it was it was a fun little call out, I guess. And if you don't want to waste the two hours trying to find out who it is, just Google Cameo in Beverly Hills Cop 4. It'll show up right away for you. And you can probably find a YouTube clip of it. As far as legacy sequels go, this is harmless. It's, it's perfectly watchable. It doesn't shame any of the characters that are in the film too much. It doesn't beat them down or dissect them. You know, Axel F doesn't come back as a completely different bitter character character who wants the precincts all closed down. <laughs> He's still very much his carefree, jokey self. And for that, I guess it's a win because the bar is set so low. I mentioned the production right away. I hate how Netflix movies look. There's no cinematic quality to them, but there is another problem with this film. There's almost no ambiance in the scenes. There were multiple moments in this movie where characters would be talking at a hockey game or a party, you know, really lively, loud events. And Axel will almost be whisper talking for some reason, like he was at the hockey game. There's almost no background noise at all. Where is the uh, the sound effects of the buzzer, a bunch of people cheering. It just felt like a couple guys standing in front of a green screen and everything was put in later. I'm sure that's not what happened, but just the way that it's blocked out, doesn't really make me feel like I'm even at a hockey game. And they also did the concierge thing again, where he goes to a hotel and they give him the price, which was way more than it was back in the 80s. He makes a little joke. That scene did not play out near as comically well because the, it didn't feel, again, very natural and real. The environment felt stock. I know these are pithy little hangups I'm having with this movie. If you just want to watch a Beverly Hills Cop movie, have some fun for a couple hours, this will get the job done. If your standards are pretty low, this will get the job done. I think it's a shadow of its former self, but that's just where I'm at with these movies. I'm, I'm, I'm very chips on my shoulder about it all. Let me know your thoughts. Did you watch this? Were you excited for it? Did it let you down or did it actually impress you? Leave a comment. Please like the video and subscribe as I post tons of movie content every single week. Would love to have you stick around. All right, take care.